Welcome back. In this video, we want to share with you five main benefits of organic food so that you can make a conscious decision if you wanted to go down this path. Before we dive in, organic food is another very controversial topic which we cannot cover in one video. So this is the first one of many. The term organic refers to the way a product is agriculturally processed, grown, transported and stored. A conventional definition of organic which might be issued from the USDA or the European Commission would translate to no synthetic pesticides, no bioengineered genes, no petroleum-based fertilizers and switch sludge-based fertilizers. Organic livestock raised for meat, dairy and eggs must need to have an access to outdoors and be fed with organic feed like grass, worms and insects. They can't be fed with growth hormones, antibiotics and other animal byproducts. Sadly, it has a current premium, but it's basically how our ancestors used to do things. But be careful, to get all the benefits of organic product, don't focus just on the label and the face value of the product. And don't get into the trap that the label said that it's bio, it's ecological <laughs> and natural. And also, if you are interested, check out our upcoming videos when we will cover how to choose organic products. <laughs> Number one, organic products minimize an exposure to chemicals like pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, fertilizers, and growth hormones. Pesticides and herbicides are toxic in its nature, and your diet chronically would expose you to these toxins if you are not eating organic. Fruits and vegetables labeled organic do not use synthetic pesticides or herbicides, which are toxic in nature. So one might ask, how are these approved to be used? While such chemicals are proved safe in small quantities, many studies have proven that constant exposure to these chemicals have close associations with an increase of risk of diabetes and metabolic syndrome. To compound this problem, many heavy metals are found in pesticides, such as cadmium. Cadmium is a highly toxic metal that accumulates in a human body. What is crucial, it is classified as a type 1 carcinogen, which means it contributes to the cancer development. Exposure to cadmium has been also linked to increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, thyroid problems, hormone imbalances. Therefore, it is pretty obvious we should do everything to minimize the exposure to cadmium. Another concern is genetically modified organisms, often known as frankenfoods. About 75% of America's processed foods have genetically modified components in it. With America and Canada having the most relaxed regulations when it comes to genetically modified organisms and whereas the extreme occurs with over 64 other countries in the world either banning GMO completely or having firmer regulations on labeling genetically modified food. So to avoid genetically modified food, especially in Canada or America, the best way is to stick with certified organic product. Currently, over 90% of the genetically modified crops grown in America are engineered to survive a chemical called glyphosate. This is the active ingredient used in Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. Glyphosate usage has increased up to 280 million pounds over the last decade. And glyphosate currently is named as one of the probable human carcinogens from the World Health Organization. This might come across as if we're against genetically modified food. If you wanna understand further, we've done a separate video talking about what genetically modified food is and whether it's harmful for your health, which you can watch in the link above. Hormones and antibiotics. Organic cows are not injected with milk boosting hormones such as bovine growth hormone, which has shown to increase insulin levels in humans. To make things worse, 90% of pesticides that Americans consume are found in fat and tissue of meat and dairy products. What is even more mind-boggling, 80% of the antibiotics produced in US are used in meat and poultry production. Experts warn that use of antibiotics like penicillin or tetracycline 
will breed an epidemic that medicine has no defense against and make the most important antibiotics ineffective. Of course, organic meat and dairy cannot be produced with usage of antibiotics and growth hormones. Number two, the greenhouse impact. Converting land from conventional agricultural process to a organic agricultural method could replenish soil fertility, reduce pesticide use, and also reduce greenhouse emissions. And in addition to that, there's been recent studies showing a shift from conventional farming could also uphold the ecosystem effectively. Organic farming alone would not be the solution to the rising consumption of food in this world. But combining organic farming with a increase in intake in vegetables, cutting down food waste, and returning to traditional methods of farming which replenish the nitrogen deposits in the soil as opposed to using synthetic fertilizers might enable us to tackle the 9 billion population expected to be in 2050 with little to no change in the size of agricultural land currently used for food production. Reason number three, ethics. Livestock raised organically must have an access to the outdoors and enough room to move, graze and develop in the manner that supports their natural behavior. These animals cannot be given growth hormones and animals treated with antibiotics cannot produce organic products. Unhealthy and mistreated animals produce unhealthy food that accounts for foodborne illnesses. To avoid illnesses and to put a stop to inhuman treatment of animals, purchase certified organic products. Number four, nutrition. Plants nurtured in an organic surrounding have been proven to have higher levels of antioxidants, vitamins and minerals due to the fertility of the soil they grow in. Just like with plants, also researchers have found Milk from organic cows have higher compositions of healthy fatty acids versus cows from conventional non-organic dairy farms. And as organic farming maintains soil fertility consistently, it's also referred to as a regenerative method of agriculture versus conventional method of agriculture. Number five, biodiversity. Wildlife, insects, frogs, birds, soil organism, are able to play their important roles in ecosystem. And we are able to play ours without any compromise and interference. The decline of birds, bees and other pollinators has been linked to usage of pesticides used by conventional farmers. Organic farms are home to 30% more wildlife species than conventional farmers. So we hope that this video helped you understand and make a more conscious decision about whether you should go organic or not. Of course, this is just a one piece of the puzzle and there is much more which we will cover in upcoming videos. As you very well know, nutrition is a very young science and the research keeps consistently changing. And the definition of organic is not necessarily dumped down to a label on a food product. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.